Okay, I'm uh, here to talk about Humble Indie Bundle 14, uh, which has now been uh, available online for well, nearly the two weeks. You, you should have uh, uh, there's two two days left to buy it, as I'm recording this right now, so probably a day and a half by the time I get this uploaded to YouTube. Um, after they, they did the usual thing of uh, after a week adding a few more games to the bundle so there's now 10 games in all uh, all of them have Linux versions and uh, I'm uh, basically going to go through each one in turn so I'll start with the ones I actually owned before before I got the bundle um, so first up Torchlight 2 this is an action RPG um, it has uh, single player and multiplayer modes um, because I already owned it I was able to give my key to a friend of mine and we've been playing some uh, multiplayer Torchlight 2 recently uh, it's quite good fun it's a reasonable thing together you have to create a separate account from your Steam account which is a bit of a night it's, you can't just play with your Steam friends you will have to register at another website uh, the game is based around uh, loot mostly uh, there's loot all over the place there's more loot when you play multiplayer um, but fortunately, um, you get a pet. So instead of always having to find shops and sell off, sell off all the loot you can't carry, you can just give all your loot to your pet and then send your pet off back to town to sell it all for you um, and carry on adventuring. Um, since your pet is also involved in combat, that can make things a bit more difficult for you uh, to fight. But but it's a lot less hassle than leaving the dungeon and travelling all the way back just to sell gear that you can't carry anymore. Uh, the weapon system is a bit interesting in that, in that your, your weapons and armour can just be plain weapons and armour but they can also have slots and uh, you can upgrade those weapons by inserting uh, ember crystals which give abilities like um, health regeneration or, or fire damage or things to your weapons or protect you from the same if, if it's, um, if, if it's uh, armour. And you can also get the weapons enchanted. So you find some enchanters around. There's one in the, the first main dungeon you go through. And uh, you can pay money to the enchanter to enchant your weapons. Uh, it's a fast-paced action game. There doesn't seem to me to be a lot of strategy. Um, mostly playing it on easy settings. Uh, but it's, it's uh, good fun, especially multiplayer. So next, Pixel Piracy. Uh, as the name suggests, this is a uh, retro style uh, 2D pirate adventure uh, or even perhaps role playing game I would guess uh, you recruit crew, you uh, sail the high seas, you defeat enemies and steal treasure and you level your character up it ought to be a game I enjoy I guess, it's, it seems like my sort of thing but the interface is very confusing to me I've, I've not really figured out how it is you're supposed to work it yet. Um, pointing pointing just indicates where your man will go but then you can move the interface, you can move the view around independent of that and I've not really found a reliable way of persuading my crewmate to uh, follow me when I go attacking things with the result that I'll leap across a boat and then die while he stands and picks his nose on, on the main boat. Uh, might get into it later, I don't know. So next, Unepic. Uh, this is a, another retro star game. It's a 2D uh, dungeon crawl role playing game. The framing device of the whole game is that uh, you know your man is playing a tabletop role playing game around somebody's house. Is a bit of an arse, it has to be said. Um, he goes to the toilet and uh, finds himself suddenly in in a in a dungeon of a castle, and he gets possessed by a devil. Who, uh, who can only escape if he dies, so he gives uh, sarcastic and bad advice most of the time. But there is there is some good humour in the interplay between the, the devil, the possessing devil, and, and the, the main character. Um, it's straightforward combat, just you know, swing the sword at the bad guys. Nothing too unusual RPG-wise that I've come across. But it's all uh, you know quite well done, and reasonable sense of humour, I feel. It's, you know, I enjoyed playing this. And I'll play it more now. So next up, Outlast. This is a uh, first-person horror adventure. Um, 
to achieve things in the game, you're a journalist, you, you have to recall the evidence of, of goings on at this uh, psychiatric institution. So you have to actually record stuff to to progress in the game. Um, it's quite unusual. The whole atmosphere of the game is, is really creepy. Um, yeah, definitely freaked me out. Especially, you, you know, you hear footsteps and you see out the corner of your eye people running past. Um, but then you can't locate them. Uh, there's some puzzles. I found them very straightforward. You know, well, I say straightforward. They, they were clearly puzzles. I, I don't like too much puzzling getting in the way of, of stories. But probably this game too scary for me to play at night at any time. So I probably won't play it much after after this. So next up, La Mulana, and uh, continuing some angular theme, this is a, a, another retro style 2D uh, RPG, more of a, a, a Japanese style RPG this time. Uh, the music is great, uh, chiptune style, uh, background music, excellent, loved it. Uh, the, actual, the actual gameplay, uh, I found it a bit annoying. Uh, you have to you have to make jumps precisely. It's often not clear where you can jump because some things block you from some directions and don't block you from other directions. I never really got it sorted out. And uh, if you accidentally miss a jump and fall off something and it flips screen, then when you climb back up the ladder, any bad guys you already dealt with will instantly respawn and are back again. So there's no there's no so basically one slip and you're back where you started, including with all the bad guys. You can't you can't really do anything. So. Uh, Again, I don't think I'll play this one much. So next, uh, 140, which is a, another platform game. But this one, uh, very modernist looking and also quite abstract. Uh, you basically control a shape, you're, you're dealing with other shapes, you're, you're finding keys which then unlock, unlock alternative actions. The puzzles are mostly uh, rhythm-based jumping puzzles, or at least have been so far, and you have to time your, your jumps along with the backing music of the game to to land things correctly. So platforms will disappear and appear and things will squash you or an unsquash, so you have to jump at the precise moment where you would get squashed if you stayed, but the thing would kill you on the other platforms, gone, that sort of thing. There are, there are frequent checkpoints, so it could be very annoying, but it's not. Um, but still, r rhythm based games, not not my thing at all really. So now, Mirror Moon EP. Now, I've, I've played this for about half an hour, and I say played. Um, I'm still not sure what this game is about. Uh, it's definitely abstract. I'm not sure what I'm trying to achieve in the game, or, or how I'm supposed to achieve it. It's, it's not made clear at all at any point in the game. Um, there's not a like you know a tutorial in the game like like you're getting quite a lot of modern games. I guess it's an indie game, so so you shouldn't expect that sort of thing so, necessarily. But um, really, just from looking at the game, I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, I read up a bit about it on Steam after after trying to play it, and it seems like there's there's a lot of there's exploration, discovery, there's some mechanic based around that. But I've not figured out what it is yet. Possibly, if I do work out how you're supposed to play it, I might give it another go later. So, Contraption Maker. It's a uh, physics-based puzzle game. You, you assemble contraptions uh, to catapult objects around, or, or drop them, or, or make them swing around things. You put most in, use elastic bands. Um, build intricate machines to, to deliver the results. Um, the puzzles seem reasonable, at least some, you know, I've, I've only done the beginning ones so far. But it seems like all the puzzles, that's quite common with puzzle games really, is there's a way to solve the puzzle and you've got to figure out what that way is. There's not, it's not like, here's a bunch of stuff to build a big elaborate contraption which which then solves the problem, which which is sort of what I expected just from the name of the game, which is perhaps a little unreasonable. But it uh, it just seemed too uh, too too uh, what's the word? Not enough options really. Uh, I did have to give up playing it because there was a weird bug um, with it's now been fixed apparently. There's a weird bug with it placing things that you couldn't then move and couldn't couldn't be part of the puzzle. So I, I sort of gave up on this one. 
Maybe I'll get back to her later. So Super Splatters. It's another physics physics based puzzle game really. Although this time it's it's a lot more freeform really. Although there are obvious things you have to do and it gives you a guidance as to where you're shooting things. You you're you're trying to make your your the characters you're controlling explode and um and and drop juice all over the bombs, which then makes the bombs explode. And uh you can do tricks while doing this, um somersaults and mid air directing changes. And uh, the reward is figured out in, in terms of the audience you, you gain from displaying these tricks. So the more tricks you do, the bigger the audience. So in that way, it's, it's actually a lot more freeform than, than say, Contraction Maker was. Because you're, you, you're figuring out for yourself what's the best way to uh, get the audience. Although, again, it's, it's somewhat arbitrary. It's not. It's not like aesthetic pleasing. It's it's number of tricks to do more or less. But anyway, I quite enjoyed this once. Once I figured out what was going on, and I'll probably play this. Play this more. It's definitely more fun than it might first appear. Finally, Shadow Warrior. So this is the this is the game you only get if you you pay the full ten dollars. But it is definitely the pick of the games. Um, it's a first-person shooter slash um, demon slicing game. Um, uh, a bit like an epic. The main character is a bit of an ass. He's very full of himself. Um, he also gets possessed by a devil who gives him sarcastic advice. Um, I think this is an accidental coincidence. Um, you, you get to do special moves. Um, you, you have key or something like that, which which uh, lets you do power-ups. And so you do combo moves like. Tap, tap forward twice, hold the button and then release and, and you do a special fire strike and you indeed you have to do some of the special moves in particular situations to advance in the game. So this game is inspired by a uh, 1997 Doomer-like uh, game. Uh, I do actually own that game as well because that got released recently and uh, here you see the updated high definition version of the 1997 classic which still looks a bit clunky to modernize um, back to the back to the shadow warrior the real game um, there's quite a lot of uh, funny moments in the game uh, I quite like you can choose the type of sword you have and the swords are, are taken from other famous games uh, like Sirius Sam or uh, <coughs> or you see what I'm using here um, I guess maybe parental advice required for this video um, it's not just a straightforward shooter I found there's one bit here where if I just tried shooting things I, I, I was dying every time and I found the trick was to actually get them to stand close to the cars and then blow the cars up with the gun um, possibly people who are better at shoot em ups would, would do better at this than me but that's the way I had to do it um, it's a very uh, 80s action movie uh, humour theme to the whole thing, um, which I quite enjoy. And uh, also, as you see here, killer rabbits. Uh, vicious vicious creatures. I did eventually manage to fend it off. Um, I think this game was worth the $10 of the bundle all by itself. So, that's Humble Bundle 14. As, as I said, you, you've probably got a day and a half left to uh, plonk your ten dollars down and get yourself um, ten Linus games including some really good ones